This video is the ultimate guide to USB hubs for Mac to make sure you aren't wasting your money on the wrong product. Starting off with first understanding USB versions and speeds. Right now, you'll see a lot of hubs that are super cheap for less than $20 that are USB-A and offer a string of USB 3.0 ports. Because you are a Mac user, any USB-A hub, while the price is attractive, is pointless as all of your ports on your computer are most likely Type-C ports, with the exception of anyone who owns a desktop Mac Mini or Mac Studio. Even then, I'd highly advise against the USB-A hub as they are not future-proofed at all, since it's using a cable type that is being phased out as the years go on. I did mention something important though that you will see a lot in USB hubs and that is the type of USB version that you're getting. I mentioned USB 3.0 earlier, so what does that exactly mean? The best way to understand this is to realize that these different USB types are referring to how fast you can transfer data in and out of your computer. For example, when you see a USB-C port on a hub or on your computer or your iPhone, it does not imply support for any particular version of the USB standard. It's simply a physical connector, so we need to dig deeper on what that connector actually supports to understand what we're getting. The most basic one you'll find today is USB 2.0. And USB 2.0 has a transfer rate of 480 megabits per second, which is the equivalent of around 60 megabytes per second. USB 3.0 has transfer speeds of five gigabits per second, which is roughly 625 megabytes per second, which is roughly 10 times faster than USB 2.0. And something really important you need to understand is USB 3.0 is also known as USB 3.1 Gen 1, and USB 3.2 Gen 1. So the naming convention of USB ports can be confusing, but I recommend to just focus on the transfer speeds advertised to understand exactly what you're getting and to also reference the website that I will link below. USB 3.2 Gen 2, also known as USB 3.1 and USB 3.1 Gen 2, offers 10 gigabit per second transfer speeds, which is roughly 1,250 megabytes per second or 1.25 gigabytes per second, which is two times faster than USB 3.0 and about 20 times faster than USB 2.0. And then from here, it starts to get a little more confusing when we start to discuss the next standard above these, which is Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and USB 4. All of them allow you to transfer data at high speeds, charge devices, and connect to multiple displays. Thunderbolt 3 and 4 both offer speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second, but Thunderbolt 4 improves upon 3 by supporting more displays at higher resolutions, offering better security, and ensuring compatibility with a wider range of devices, including all Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4 devices. USB 4 on its own also reaches speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second, but its performance can vary depending on the device and the cable. The reason is USB 4 is highly versatile and backwards compatible with older USB standards and Thunderbolt 3. So because of this, it can't guarantee the same level of performance speeds because it's accommodating for older USB standards. If you bought a MacBook or a Mac desktop in the last few years, you'll see it most likely supports the Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4 standard, while newer Macs now support Thunderbolt 4 and the USB 4 standard. So this is actually important to know because you have the potential to tap into really fast speeds when buying a USB hub that supports these standards. In terms of HDMI and DisplayPort, these are the ports used to connect a Mac to a monitor. One caveat is if you are using a newer monitor, most of those have a Type-C port that allows you to insert it to your Mac and you can connect it that way. But if that's not the case, which is likely for most of you watching this video, the important thing to clarify with USB hubs is what kind of HDMI and display port is it offering. If you have a 4K monitor at 60 Hz, you want to make sure that hub supports that if you plan to use HDMI. SD card readers are another common port and extremely useful for anyone in the creative field to get your footage off the camera. Most standard hubs offer a transfer speed of 104 megabytes per second, but if you have an SD card that supports the UHS-2 standard and you find a hub that has a UHS-2 card reader, you can get transfer speeds of up to 320 12 megabytes per second, which is triple the speed, so something to consider if you value your time as a creative. Ethernet is another common port if you plan to use your computer wired to the internet. Most hubs come with a gigabit ethernet port, which is what you'd want if you have a higher end internet speed in your home. I don't even think you can find a hub without this being the standard. I wouldn't overthink this port unless you are super keen on finding something that has a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port for specific networking and transfer needs, which I won't get into in this video because it is out of the scope. Power delivery is another term 
you'll see a lot in hubs, which essentially is a charging standard. So a lot of hubs typically can provide up to 100 watts of power, allowing you to charge your Mac really fast if it's a laptop. I'm not aware of any cheap hub that's worth buying that doesn't have at least 100 watts of power delivery, so no need to overthink this as well. Another thing to consider is whether you should buy a hub with an external power brick or a hub that uses the power off your laptop. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. If you're someone who will be connecting a lot of power hungry devices to your hub, there's only so much power a laptop can provide before you run the risk of insufficient power being distributed to everything connected, resulting in disconnections and reduced performances on your devices. So if this sounds like you, you may want to consider a hub that has an external power source as they reduce the likelihood of performance issues due to insufficient power. However, if you're someone that values portability and something that's plug and play, hubs without external power sources are the way to go. Keep in mind though, you don't need to live in a vacuum here. Ideally, you could have a hub for your home office that uses external power and a hub that you can take with you on the go to meet both needs, but that's highly dependent on your budget. The last thing to consider is build quality, and it's way more important than you realize as a lot of hubs aren't actually made well. They break over time, so it's important to find something that will last you. Thankfully, the point and existence of this video is to provide recommendations for you so that you can feel confident about the USB hub you're buying. So I decided that it would be best to organize my recommendations in these categories. Budget, mid-tier, someone who hates cables, and a few premium recommendations. Starting off with my budget recommendation, it's currently $35.99 on Amazon as of this video, and it's the Bezos 6-in-1 USB hub, which is part of their Metal Gleam series line of products. There's so much to like about this product, and full disclosure, this was sent to me from Bezos, and they are the official partner for today's video. But don't worry, there are other recommendations that aren't just from them in this video, but they do make some of the best, most affordable hubs out there that provide premium features, so I really wanted them to be a part of this. So for starters, the build quality of this is amazing. It's made of a dark gray aluminum that feels solid, and the USB-C cable is super high quality. It's braided, it feels secure. It's the kind of USB-C cable you'd feel confident wouldn't wear down over time. And for added portability and safety, there is a place for your dangling USB-C cable to go when it's not in use, which is awesome for travel and protection. You get six ports in total, 100 watt power delivery port to fast charge your laptop, 4K HDMI up to 60 hertz, two 10 gigabit USB-A ports, and one 10 gigabit USB-C port, which is approximately 1,250 megabytes per second, and a gigabit ethernet. It's also unique in that it has a screen off button, so if you press it once, you turn off the display without turning off the actual hub, which can be useful if you quickly want privacy as you step away from your computer. As for my mid-tier recommendation, it's another product from Bezos and their Metal Gleam series, and it's their 10-in-1 USB hub, and as of this video, it should be on sale for only $47.99, which is a steal for everything that you get here. For starters, it's the same amazing build quality as the last hub discussed, full aluminum build, but this time it's a more darker space gray professional look that I like. It has the same great braided USB-C cable, the same area to keep it in place when it's not in use, and even carbon fiber around the screen lock button. But the most important thing is the ports, and this isn't short of it at all. 100 watt power delivery port for fast charging of your computer, two 4K HDMI ports with one of them supporting up to 4K 120Hz or dual 4K monitors, two USB 2.0 ports that are USB-A, SD card and TF card reader, gigabit ethernet, one 10 gigabit USB-A port and one 10 gigabit USB-C port. This hub comes with a screen lock button where if you double press it, it will lock your Mac OS very quickly and require a password, which is perfect for anyone that wants that added convenience of security while working. I would definitely say that this hub starts to teeter into the territory of being the only one you need as it's really designed to be something that you can integrate and live at a permanent desk setup, but also something that you can take with you on the go as it's super compact. As for my I hate cables option, there's no better one out there right now than the Anchor 547 USB-C hub, which is a seven and two device. So it will take up two of your Thunderbolt ports on your MacBook. So some trade off there for wanting to avoid cables, but it's still very useful. So let me explain. Design wise, this is as perfect as it gets for a USB hub without cables. It's made of a premium aluminum, and Anchor went out of their way to make sure this hub will not cover your MagSafe charging port. That's big. Not all hubs designed like this do that. In terms of ports, 
you get back a Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 3 port. And I say or because this hub supports Thunderbolt 4. And remember, we said Thunderbolt 4 is compatible with Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4. So if your MacBook has Thunderbolt 4, you'll get that made available to you in this port. But if your MacBook has a Thunderbolt 3 port, you'll get that protocol made available to you instead. And it's multifunctional. So it can be used for 100 watt power delivery, can be used for all of the amazing 40 gigabit per second glory that is a Thunderbolt port for extremely fast transfer. For speeds. Keep in mind, you may think to yourself that the basis hubs mentioned earlier don't have a Thunderbolt port, but it's because you'd still have one made available to you on your Mac, as those hubs only take up one of the two or three ports on your computer. You also are getting 4K HDMI at 60 Hertz, three five gigabit ports, two of them USB-A and one of them USB-C, and an SD card and micro SD slot. All of this for $49.99, which isn't bad at all, considering all the stuff that you get here. As for the premium recommendation, the ultimate docking station crown has to go to the CalDigit TS4, which is a Thunderbolt 4 docking station with 18 ports. It's kind of insane. I'm not aware of any Thunderbolt dock that has more features than this. It comes with three Thunderbolt 4 ports with support of 40 gigabits per second performance, eight USB ports that offer 10 gigabit per second transfer speeds, with some of them being USB-A and others being USB-C. We got UHS-2 SD card and micro SD card slots for enhanced transfer speeds, and there's even a front-facing 20 watt USB-C port ports specifically for charging your smartphone and other devices with ease. We're also getting 2.5 gigabit ethernet, which is wild since most docks only offer gigabit ethernet. So if you have networking equipment to support this, it's going to be 2.0 times faster than the standard gigabit port. There's also three audio ports, one audio port on the front and one on the back, and a microphone input on the back as well. And there's a display port 1.4 if you still use that for connecting to a monitor. It also has the ability to stand vertically or horizontally. I love also that the Thunderbolt 4 host connection to your laptop is at the back, which makes the cable management a lot easier as many other docks, if not most of them, have it at the front. And it also supports a single 8K display or dual 6K displays, which is insane. Keep in mind, since this is a docking station specific for the desk and because it has all these ports, it needs sufficient power to accomplish this. So there will be a large power brick that you need to plug into the TS4 and an outlet to get this working. A bonus recommendation for someone who wants a premium dock for their desk, but they don't need the expensive behemoth of the CalDigit TS4 would be the Anchor 12-in-1 Thunderbolt 4 dock, which I've personally used for the last few years now. It has two Thunderbolt 4 ports, two 4K HDMI, gigabit ethernet, audio in and out on the front, SD card reader, four USB-A ports on the back with two of them being 10 gigabit and the other being 480 megabits per second, and a 20 watt USB-C port on the front that also supports 10 gigabit transfer speeds. So it's clear that this is less than the CalDigit TS4, but still quite sufficient if you don't connect that many devices or if you're on a budget and can't afford something as premium as the TS4. But now I want to switch things up and bring our focus back to the MacBook Pro. I've been using a fully loaded Space Black M3 Max MacBook Pro for a while now and I learned a lot from that experience, all the good and the bad. So click here to watch my full length review to see how this laptop fits into my lifestyle. 